This Moranga man is making petrol from plastic waste and he's running his car off of it. Is it real? Absolutely it's real. Just playing. I can't say that. That's not proper. We have to watch it first and figure out. There's some secret little magic going on here with the golden brick road or something. Or if it is indeed real, not that he's just peeing and there's a little container, right? Actually, making petrol from plastic. Ooh, I hurt my shoulder on that one. Was not O'Neal when I caught this one, but nonetheless, what we're gonna do, you know what it is, nature jab. And we actually have some videos today with this man here, this beautiful, beautiful man from Moron. My name is James Muritu, I'm the founder of ProGreen Innovations Limited. And basically what we do here is that we turn waste plastic into usable fuel. Uh, our passion is uh, to clean the environment, uh, but not just clean and throw away the plastic, but recover value from uh, the waste plastic. So this is an idea I've been running with for the last two years. Uh, lot of I love this guy already. Why? Because of his accent. Now I'm just playing. What I love is what he said. Because people often attribute, we go to the beach and stuff and we're like picking up the plastic off the beach that we're cleaning the environment. While you are getting off the beach, you're not really cleaning the environment because you're just picking that plastic off of that land and throwing it onto another land, the landfill. I'm not undermining people who pick up litter and stuff, but what I'm saying is ultimately it's not cleaning anything because we're just putting it in a landfill. When you think about it, a landfill is actually kind of just very dismissive it's just throw it away forget about it just oh just throw it on that ground it's kind of disrespectful in my opinion to just throw things in the landfills especially things that have value metal plastic things that can be reused so unfortunately most of the things that are within landfills things that have so much content they can at least have the energy extracted out of them of research into it and uh, in the last one year now we've been doing some pilot tests and we're seeing quite some good results it's actually a particular type of plastic, plastic and that's uh, where our research has uh, evolved because we had to spend time trying out all kinds of plastics. But with time we were able to narrow down. And what we came to realize is that you have some specific type of plastic that will give you now the right fuel. Not every plastic will work. Currently we are able to get two kinds of fuels. Uh, we have Very true, not every plastic is equal when it comes to pyrolysis. It makes sense even by the names of the plastic. We have LDPE, low density polyethylene, HDPE, high density polyethylene, PETE, polyethyl terephthalate, TS, styrofoam, PP, polypropylene. Literally by those names, all those different configurations are different chemical structures of these things. If you're just trying to put the oil right into your car, you have to find the perfect type of plastic. Some of it will gel up on the oil. Some of the oil might have more dense characteristics, so it might be closer to diesel, kerosene, than gasoline or petrol. So yeah, every single plastic is different. Fortunately, what I found is it really does not matter what type of plastic you put in there if you end up distilling and refining the oil afterwards anyway no matter what you get out you can distill out just the petrol just the diesel just the kerosene of uh, petrol equivalent and this is petrol that is usable with uh, petrol uh, engines small and mid-sized petrol engines um, we also have de diesel equivalent fuel which is usable with heavy machinery uh, that uses diesel 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 uh, generators, diesel engines as well. So it's it's two two kind of fuels, diesel and petrol. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. Some plastics will naturally give you something that can go right into a gasoline engine, and some plastics will naturally give you something that can go right into a diesel engine. But if you're distilling the oil afterward, you want to make whatever you want out of anything you get from any type of plastic. Uh, yes, actually it, it does for cars as well. I, I have my vehicle here. I mean, that's what I use in my in my diesel car. It works. This is an awesome invention, guys. It's awesome. Akuna bangi apa. It's something that works. It's awesome. Um, in terms of how this fuel performs, I should say uh, we have a, a we have a good product, and. Um, Talking to some of the people, who, the people who've used it, I mean, it's a great product, and I'm proud to be a Kenyan 
I'm proud to say that it's Kenyan designed, it's Kenyan made. Crude oil has things like sulfur in it, right? But plastic is already desulfurized. Plastic has already been pretty cleaned up and removed of a lot of things. A lot of plastic is literally clear. For me to go from black crude oil to literally a clear water bottle, they have to remove so many impurities. You make the oil out of that, there's already all those impurities that are not there to begin with. They've been in North America, Europe as well. So designing and building systems. Uh, but the last three years, uh, I got an interest to get into chemistry. Uh, one time we melted plastic, which gave us some jelly liquid. And that's where an interest uh, came about. And so we have, um, we have volunteers, we have groups, we have women who go out there. They also scrap it. They will collect all that plastic and they will bring to us. So once you sort it out, you need to shred it. So there's a shredding machine that you just saw when you're coming in here. Once you shred that, you need to clean it up. So when you clean, you remove all the impurities, you remove all the dirt. Once you've removed all the dirt, then you need to load the material into a reactor and close that box very tightly. So that's an oxygen-free box. There should be no oxygen. So once you've loaded that, then you need to heat it. So down there, you'll see a furnace. So the furnace is heated with our own fuel, so we have our own briquettes, which are all made here, and that's what you use to heat it. That is really cool. So they're using the carbon that comes from the plastic at the end to then be a briquette to heat up the furnace. And that's absolutely possible. The carbon you get is the same as coal. Coal is carbon. So it's just amazing how many different yields that are completely usable and truly recyclable come out of this product. And I will also say, he did say we're burning the plastic. That's not true. And you know, anybody who's into pyrolysis, it kind of does get under your skin when people say, you're burning the plastic. No, we're not burning it at all because it's an oxygen free environment. In order for something to burn, it needs to react with oxygen in order to oxidize. Because pyrolysis Pyrolysis is done in an oxygen-free environment, it is actually destructively distilled, which is essentially the same as instead of it binding with oxygen and oxygen destroying it and breaking it apart into different yields like CO2 or formaldehydes and such, it's actually staying in its own form, its original chemical form, but just breaking into smaller pieces, becoming a vapor, and that vapor can then be condensed into an oil, and then some of that vapor is left over and it just stays a permanent flammable vapor like propane. There's a huge difference between what we're doing and just burning because yes just burning plastic is not good because when the oxygen binds with these things that are in the plastic it, it puts off some pretty dirty and very harmful emission it's also a temperature control system so depending on what you want to produce what will happen is there will be two production cycles so the first cycle is to produce crude oil that crude oil is what is referred to as heavy oil heavy fuel making that is very easy and it will just take you a couple of years so the second cycle of production is to refine that, that crude oil, also referred to as uh, poly-heavy fuel. Uh, so what we do is that we play around with temperatures so that we can decide whether you want petrol equivalent or whether you want diesel equivalent. So it's a two-shift process. You first produce crude oil, and then secondly, you refine uh, the crude oil. This is all fabricated here, right here. Nothing imported. It's all made in Kenya. Are you so instead of distilling the fuel afterwards, they control the temperature to begin with to decide what they're going to get. Like if they want to get more pet more petrol or more diesel. Now this works because you will get in things you could put in the engine. But if you are trying to put this in the market, like if you're trying to get this type of fuel in the gas pump, this is not going to work. This is unacceptable. And the reason why is because it's impossible to perfectly control the temperature in every point of the plastic to guarantee that you're only getting gasoline yields in that oil. The oil will always have some mixes of some different things and it just will not meet the EPA requirements. You have to distill it if you want to know 100% that you're getting 100% these yields of gasoline. Soon be meeting my partner here who is a mechanical engineer, a seasoned guy. Um, so he's done most of the work in terms of fabricating. So we have our own equipment here. Um, but we fine-tuned the process. So the first time we started, we had a smaller machine. What you're just seeing behind me, that's much smaller. Then a couple of months ago, we went to a bigger box. So there's a lot of chemistry uh, involved here. Not commercialized yet. Uh, we want to do this in the right way, in the right format. Uh, we want to pay any taxes that have to be paid. 
So we've not gone to commercialization stage yet. Uh, where we are right now is uh, the pilot stage. So in the pilot stage, we've involved a few willing users. It was not easy, because you're telling somebody how few here that you can test. It was a very hard sell, uh, but we were able to get at least people who are constantly using it, and they've really helped us to refine the product. So employees, uh, young people, fresh from university, uh, people who didn't have any jobs, but they saw what we were doing and they were willing to join and they've learned through the ropes. Uh, so we have, again, seven full-time uh, people working across different areas. Uh, some collecting waste, we actually have IAD, others uh, operating the machines. Pyrolysis is expensive to do because no matter how you put it, it is not a technology you can just really just get things online. You can like go on Alibaba and you'll find pyrolysis machines that you can get shit. Ultimately, if you're trying to innovate in the field, you gotta build it yourself. This is just regular pyrolysis we're talking about here. If you're doing microwave pyrolysis, no matter what your skill set is, it is expensive as heck. I was using parts from literally scrap microwaves from the landfill. If I wanted to use genuine microwave parts to make the machine way better, I would be out thousands of dollars for just a single magnetron. I want that because I want true results and I want to see the true potential of this microwave technology, but unfortunately, it's a lot of money. Even though this is an amazing technology and it's something we all want, the attention is not quite there yet. To where, like, for example, this video only has 141,000 views. This video should have 100 million views, right? The attention isn't quite there yet, and that is something I'm trying to do by, you know, really incorporating social media and just the younger generation into this, let people know what's up, because that's what we ultimately need. We need this to become a trend. We need this to become the next TikTok dance, right? Because this is truly amazing. This can truly change the world, but we need the world's attention to know about it and to support it. Now imagine this, if this video from this guy got 100 million views, right? Enough AdSense from that alone will give him enough money to build the next plant. He doesn't have to start a GoFundMe, he doesn't have to ask for a penny, right? Just the attention alone will do it. And I believe truly that at that point, when, when this does become house thing, like it's just everywhere, people know about it, you'll see a lot more people with videos coming out doing this, which is ultimately the, the real true goal. Overall, bravo to this guy. I absolutely respect what he's doing. Absolutely love it. Really inspiring to see. Makes me want to just go out there and start welding some pipes together just to make something again. You know, sometimes I'm like, man, sometimes I want to just do something, get, get dirty again doing this because it's just such a good feeling when you're taking something that normally just ends up in the landfill or the ocean and you're making something real out of it.